Jeremy Corbyn has had a couple of days now to assess what part he played in Labour's devastating general election defeat. Writing in two newspapers, he blamed Brexit, he blamed the media, but he also took some of the blame himself. I wanted to unite the country that I love, he wrote, but I'm sorry that we came up short and I take my responsibility for it. His shadow chancellor, who will also be standing down, was more fulsome. I own this disaster, so I apologise. I apologise I apologise to all those wonderful Labour MPs who have lost their seats, who worked so hard. I apologise to all our campaigners, but most of all, I apologise to those people who desperately need a Labour government. And yes, you know, if, if anyone's to blame, it is me, full stop. One of the party's biggest power brokers suggested they got their Brexit policy wrong. What wasn't taken on board was the consequences of becoming a party that offered a second referendum. Um, we always knew that that would be dangerous within our heartlands and it was our task, all of our tasks, to try and get the message across that there's more to life than Brexit and we failed. So who could do better? Amongst the early front-runners are Rebecca Long-Bailey, Sir Keir Starmer and Angela Rayner. Today, Lisa Nandy said she too might run. I'm seriously thinking about it. Um, the reason that I'm thinking about it is because um, we've just had the most shattering defeat where you really felt in towns like mine that the earth was quaking and we've watched the entire Labour base just crumble beneath our feet. The timetable for electing Jeremy Corbyn's replacement will be set out in early January. But Mr Corbyn has told Labour's General Secretary he wants a new leader elected by the end of March. Carl Dinan, ITV News.